Now, a number of people already noticed that I stayed neutral throughout the period of election in the last just concluded election in Edo State, the governorship election, wherein Obasaki emerged victorious on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. Well, my neutrality is deliberate. It is because, of course, I knew I had sentiment for Obasaki to win. And the apps, it's very obvious. The same reason everybody who celebrated his victory wanted it. Yeah, we all wanted to see the downfall of the so-called godfathers who think they can always impose and do whatever they want. Well, it's one step in a positive direction, but does it therefore amount to victory for the people? Or we are just basking in yet another uh, euphoria of the utopian? Well, it will depend on two things. One, the party platform on which Obasaki came victorious. And second, Obasaki himself. If the party wants or allows Obasaki to work, well, the people will benefit. But if the party also wants to be uh, like Shylock, requesting for pound of flesh, always requesting for everything, or cutting the largest proportion of the state uh, revenue, and allowing him to only use little to work for the people, it still amounts to taking one step forward, 10 steps backwards. But if the party allows him the free hand to work, well, it will mean, maybe to a great extent, victory for the people. And the second is Obasiki himself. Does he truly want to work for people, as he claimed in the last electioneering campaign process, wherein he had said that he just wanted the godfathers to back off so that he would be able to work? Well, let's hope that is the truth. My only curiosity here is, APC and PDP share the same corridor, so the exchange is always very easy for them. Recall that in less than two weeks, the candidate of the opposition party in the last election, Ize Yamu, became the candidate of the ruling party, APC. And the sitting governor became the candidate of the opposite party in just less than a month. That makes it very worrisome for people like us to conclude whether the victory is actually for the people or it's just the same of the same. Befum Bego. Now it brings me forward to some of you will remember when I said three reasons before I will begin to take those agitators for Biafra, Urudu, and Arewa Republic uh, secession before I will begin to take them serious. The second condition I give them is if during 2023 election we have not yet achieved Urudu, Biafra, and Arewa, whether these agitators will not therefore begin to line up behind Tinubu, Atiku, Obi, and the rest of them and soft pedaling on the agitation. Now, we also saw an example in Edo State where people forgot about the agitation and were lining up behind Obasiki on PDP platform. So, whether IPC and PDP are different, all of us already know the answer. That is not to say that the agitation for Odudu and Biafra is not totally genuine. I also want Odudu, I want Biafra, and I want everybody to have self-governance. But then, I suspected from the beginning already that those who are always having plan B in the control of political affairs have already, almost already hijacked it. There's something they always do. They always ride on the wave and they always put money into it, pump it very well, put a respectable face and join the voices. So that when it is time for election, they will not tell you, oh, our kinsman is contesting. How about we slow down a bit and see the outcome of election? If it favors us, then we'll continue with one Nigeria. If it doesn't, then we'll quit. Now the question I have is, if Tinubu wins in 2023, will we still have Urudua Republic? I don't know the answer. If Obi, Peter Obi wins in 2023, will we still have a uh, Biafra Republic? Well, I do not know. But all I know for, for certain is that our people always have this division. They always know how to bring money in and divide the people. And that is because they are still loyal to their oppressors, one way or the other. My name is Shegunlo once again. Let's be objective as always.